Hello farmers, this is Fred, the agronomist and the farmer, and like it has always been, I'm always in the field, working with farmers, and also training uh, farmers. Today I've visited, today is a farm visit today, I've visited one of my farmers who is doing uh, tomatoes, as a big farm of tomatoes, uh, over 10 acres of tomatoes, and um, they are doing well as you can see. Uh, so far, we are at fruiting stage and vegetative stage. So uh, I wanted to share with you some of the things that we've done, some of the things that we have been doing here uh, for this farmer to be at this point and what we expect to do uh, so that we can achieve a good quality tomato and so that we can go uh, to the market and uh, have uh, good returns. Although at the moment there is a challenge with the tomato market here in Kenya, uh, but uh, we are hoping for the best. Things are going to change and uh, farmers will get something in, in return. So, to start with, as you can see, um, I think uh, uh, this is usually one of the biggest questions you usually ask me what is the type of irrigation? This is not rain fed. It's not rain fed. Everything is under irrigation. As you can see, this is where the pipes run. The type of irrigation is furrow irrigation. This is this is this furrow irrigation. Pipes runs here, and water is put through the furrow. So this is not this is not rain fed. It's furrow irrigation. So there are several things that have been done in this field, and uh, we, we are going to start with the nutrition. When we planted these tomatoes, uh, we started uh, with the high phosphorus uh, product. High phosphorus, talking of high phosphorus product, the reason why I'm, 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 sometimes I'm not so specific to the product we use is because different countries and different regions have different, um, uh, different products. But we are lucky uh, at the moment we've partnered with one of our best nutrition a company in Kenya who is uh, Seed Pro Kenya, providing all the nutritional product. And Seed Pro Kenya has DAP, which is among iPhosphorus product, as uh, trip, uh, double 2323, 20, or 2323 20, also iPhosphorus product. And there is iPhosphorus folia called Mazao Plenty uh, iPhosphorus. So when you when you go to the to the to the market. Uh, it's not you don't need to be so specific to the brand, but if you are in Kenya, you can go for the Mazao uh, print product from uh, CD Pro. Uh, but if you're outside Kenya, you're outside East Africa, you can go. You just look for iPhosphorus product. That is the planting fertilizer, or that is the nutrition. If you're doing organic, uh, also that is present. Uh, that is the starting point. So you start with uh, you plant with iPhosphorus. From my first flowers, you come to the vegetative um, uh, product, high nitrogenous product. And uh, in most cases, most farmers don't do a granule fertilizers. They go for foliars, which is good. But in my case, I usually prefer to do the granule fertilizers in the soil, also do the foliars. I combine both because they, they complement each other. They are both essential to the plant. If you deal with uh, foliar alone, the plant doesn't look very healthy or at some point it will be it will not be in a position to produce as as many fruit as possible if you give it the granule only the plant can grow well without without foliar by the way with granule uh, ground fertilizer alone and it can perform perfectly but but if you combine both you're in a good position so high nitrogenous fertilizer I usually go for 2323, which is my best nitrogenous fertilizer. Uh, the reason why I like 2323, one, it's not acidic. Secondly, it can do with all soils, be it uh, alkaline soil, be it acidic soil, be it a good soil. 2323 zero does with all soils. So that is for the nutrition. From there, you come to this stage that we are in, which is uh, fruiting. As you can see, the, the tomatoes are fruiting. They are fruiting, they are forming fruit at the same time because this is a, 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 a determinate variety. It's still, it's, it has, it's still producing um, uh, fruit and flowers. So there is continuous production of fruit 
as 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 the 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 the, 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 the tomato grows taller we can use this one let's use this variety this plant here you see it has a set of flower of fruit uh in the bureau sector uh, uh in the bureau section then there is some other fruit that are coming out on the top here the flowers are also coming out and you can see it's still growing it's still growing there are there are there, there is a growing point so at this point now this variety needs a mix of of different nutrient among them we need a nitrogenous fertilizer for it to to have healthy uh healthy uh vegetation because without vegetation you are not going to have good flower setup from vegetation we need to have fruits and we need to have flowers and we need, we need to have uh to have uh fruit so in this case we usually go for a calcium based fertilizer and uh, currently there are some calcium fertilizers breaded with boron so a calcium and boron uh, fertilizer is very essential at this stage for flower formation and to for, for for the not to lose the fruit because if you form the fruit and the fruit lacks uh, calcium again the fruit may end up falling or you may end up experiencing the so-called uh, blossom end rot which is a very uh, uh serious problem due to lack of uh, cal calcium or due to poor uh, irrigation so we need a, 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 a boron calcium fertilizer from there because of trace element like zinc which is also a very necessary uh, nutrient at this stage we usually use uh, uh foliars for for other trace element i usually use foliar so my farm has been using foliars among the foliars the best foliars they're using at the moment is mazao plenty i calcium i calcium as all trace element and very soon they will be using mazao plenty i sure k which will, will be a, to enlarge the fruit and also to, to to have a good color when it comes to ripening so that all for the nutrition today that was just a a a a a, 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 a hint or a, what has been done as far as nutrition is concerned if you are interested or if you want to learn more about tomato farming i've done so many videos on my youtube channel if you are not following me at farm with fred uh through in my youtube you can check the link on my bio on this page i have a very good uh, class for tomato farmers i have a very good class for other crops so you can go there and learn and also you can dm me at the moment, my WhatsApp is not functioning, so uh, the, the easiest way to reach out to me is through my email address because also my DM is temporarily not functioning in this page. So uh, just email me if you want to, uh, to look for me because if you WhatsApp me, you won't get me. I'm off WhatsApp at the moment uh, because of some few technical challenges with the gadget that I'm using. So uh, so you have to email me for to reach out to me or just... Uh, you can use the comment section and reach out to me. I'll be able to connect to you and uh, we'll talk. So the next step is very important uh, step is uh, uh, disease control, especially as you can see the weather is it's it's cold. You can see it's it's cold. The the the, the clouds are dark. Uh, we are in a cold season season. So for you to have a healthy plant or for you to be having uh, such an healthy plant, what do you need to do? One, you need to make sure to do most more of protective fungicide or protective uh, product to prevent your your, your tomatoes from uh, from fungal diseases. Because if you fail to do that, uh, due to the cold and humid condition, your tomatoes will be attacked by fungal diseases like downy mildew, which is a deadly to, uh, to tomatoes. Uh, late blight, are and late blight, both they are very dangerous when it comes to tomatoes. The late blight is worse because it attacks the leaves, it attacks the flowers, and it it attacks the the fruit. The downy mildew is not as worse as late because it only attacks the leaves. So protect the, the the leaves of the the plant, the leaves protect the fruit and protect the flowers. And in most cases, we usually do a protective a fungicide. You can use um. A mancozeb metalaxyl product 
you can use copper based product they are best when it comes to um uh, when it comes to protecting this young crop and again uh at this stage or at this uh, point uh there may be a very poor uptake of nutrition from the ground from the soil because of the weather How the weather is uh, you all know back to class we learned about photosynthesis you know how photosynthesis take place so when it's very cold there is no or there is low or no photosynthesis that, that takes place so at this point there may be uh, a big challenge for the uptake of nutrient especially when it comes to calcium uh, if you apply the basal calcium there may be, may be very poor uptake of calcium so for you to avoid this or for you to be on the safer side i may advise farmers if you're experiencing such a weather just go for foliars eh? foliars may will help you foliars will give you the best result and you'll be on the safer side uh on the next step is um the the, the pest the pest at this point uh the most dangerous pest is the bollworm because uh the the the, the, the drips and the mite are discouraged by the weather so the bollworm is the disaster and uh, it's it's the easiest it's also among the easiest uh pest to control so the uh, for you to be on the safer side like i told you just be do of protective more than curing for you to be on the safer side before we had this um live show or this training today i wanted to show you a very dangerous uh, tomato uh, challenge which is which is a viral disease this one as you can see in this tomato here the tomato looks stunted comparing with the neighboring plant here it looks healthy these are stunted uh, crop we, this is the so called tomato yellow leaf curl virus mostly caused by sucking insect among them the drips, uh, the white flies, uh, and the aphids. They are the cause they transmit this, this disease. And they can move this disease from this plant to the other because when they bite from here, they can transit. So this, there is nothing that cures this. I've visited several farmers who have been uh, told that if you use an hormone, it can cure this. This is not curable. What we do is to prevent our plants from being attacked by this disease by controlling the pest and if there is any plant that is showing any symptom of such a, a, a disease we usually encourage uh, the, the the farmer to uproot or to the so-called logging to remove the affected um, plant to avoid spread of the disease hope you've learned something from our today's class like i told you if you have not subscribed to my youtube channel run there at farm with fred subscribe uh, if you are unable to run to the to the YouTube, the link is on my bio. Join uh, that farming uh, YouTube channel and learn everything to do with farming from tomatoes to watermelon to capsicum to anything that you want to learn from me. If you have a comment, leave it on the comment section so that I can, I'll get back to you and I'll be able to respond uh, after I'm done with these farmers. Hope you've learned something. Bye.